Good morning, everyone. It's welcome to Two Minute Tips for Healthy Beauty and Confident Aging. I'm Sharon Danley, and this channel's focus is on inner and outer beauty through simplicity, strength, style, and grace. Okay, I just want to make sure that we ha are live here and that we've got people uh, on board or can hear or see and that there we have no technical difficulties. Today's subjects are going to be about avoiding summer makeup melt and keep your cool hairdos. Okay, and then we're going to have our usual Q&A. So if someone could please give me a comment uh, or... Um, you know, show me a thumbs up or something. That would be really good. Okay, we're we're good to go. All right. So number one out of the shoot, we're going to look up at makeup melting and. In the heat of the summer, and some of us, well, not me particularly, although Toronto is getting pretty bad, the humid weather with our makeup is really, really difficult to deal with. And in planning the streamline approach I have with makeup, I've taken all that into consideration. In the summer when things melt, you can count on the fact that your BB creams, your CC creams, your liquids, your... Uh, cream foundations, all of those are going to melt. All makeup is going to be affected by it. But a way to avoid it to its max is to use a, a dual finish powder. You, you know you know the drill on that and there's videos in the beauty playlist to show you how to use it. Either the Burrell or the MAC. When your face is cleansed and you put on your moisturizer and or sunscreen and give it time to soak in and do its thing, then you apply your makeup, your dual finish powder makeup. That's going to give you longevity. It truly is. And for the eyebrow area, make sure you cover that too with the dual finish powder because those that use an eyeshadow to shape their brows like I do and recommend, when you, when, when you put the dual finish powder on, it almost acts like a primer but does a much better job than a primer in my opinion. And so that it's, it wears really, really well. Um, so make sure that you cover, and your eyes. Oh, make sure your eyes. And I've shown you this before, but here's my two brushes that I use the most. One that I've put the elastic bands around to give it a dome. And I, once I put it on, I put an extra layer around the eyes, especially the inside corners and the lid, okay? And at the back end here. That makes a difference. And pushing it in. Now, the other thing that you can do is dampen your sponge before you go over your powder and put it on in a stipple motion. That's going to help it last much longer too. And the one thing I can say is it's been proven over and over and over. With this makeup, you will get a glow, like you're, you're, you're glistening, shall we say, because men sweat, women glisten. The glistening, the, the moisture that comes through from your skin is not going to coagulate the the liquid that may be underneath. It's going to work with the powder and you will end up with a glow on your face, not looking like a, a, a you know, a, um, a grease slick. So that's one of the ways to really help with your foundation. And again, because you're applying foundation to the eye, uh, it will help to, um, oh, I, and I want to bring something out here for you. It will help to it will help to make sure that your eyeshadows stay in place. They will not they will not melt. They will not fall into the you know the, into the creases around the eye or that sort of thing. Now, for touch ups, that's really easy because maybe you get tearing or maybe you're blowing your nose or whatever. You've seen this before, and I've done a video on it. But this is one of those little toothpick. Whoops, wrong side. One of those little toothpick containers. And, whoops, sorry about that. What I've done, let me see. See this? This is an old eyeshadow pan. I removed the, the balance of the eyeshadow that was in it, and I put in the powder foundation mixed with a little alcohol, smooshed it together, and I carry this so that when I need to touch up, if I'm really hot or whatever, I touch my face with either a... a 
paper towel that's been separated, so that you've got a fine, thin layer, or face blot tissues. Do that, and then you can go in, let me get this right, with your clean finger and touch up wherever you need to. This is so easy to carry in your person for a quick touch up. It is the bomb, in my opinion. Okay, so now let's get back to the important stuff too. Cleansing your face is really important and doing it every night, removing all makeup and moisturize properly. And in the morning, when you rinse your face, you moisturize and or use a protection like the Neutrogena, which I've recommended. The other thing that is uh, going to help with, uh, you know, keeping your skin, um, keeping your skin in good shape so that it Where's the makeup well? Now, I'm going to put links to these things in the description box below after the video has been uploaded for its playback, so it'll all be there to you. I've got a video in the live, one of the live stream playlists on how to clean your brushes and how to clean your face, okay, or how, how I do it and what I would recommend. And that people have come to me and said that when they follow those procedures, it's really good. Now, with sanitizing your, um, your products and your tools. It's essential. All of this stuff contributes to how well your makeup wears, believe me, and how long it lasts. Sanitizing is simple. Spray some alcohol on a tissue or a paper towel is better or a micro cloth or something. Wipe around all your you know your your palettes wipe around everything clean everything off spray your your powders with a spritz of alcohol sanitizing and make sure that you brush your brushes every every week now if you're using a gel liner on your upper waterline then you need to clean your brush. Now, let me see if I can find what I use when I use the gel liner uh, in the pot rather than in rather than the pencil. This is about the size of a dome brush that I use to put it on with. And I, I what I do is put a little bit on, and I just simply spread it across the waterline. Now you can do it with a single stroke or just do just a little bit. And what I do is try to put it, put it in closer to the lashes and push it up into the lashes, okay? Because some people have been asking about that. Now, that brush, once you've used it, needs to be cleaned. And it's really easy to have a little atomizer of alcohol where you have your makeup. Spritz on a Kleenex, wipe the brush off, get rid of all the product for two reasons. It keeps the, uh, the, make, the tools that you put around your eye sanitized, avoiding styes and other things that can happen with unclean products around the eyes. And it cleans the brush off so that the, because the gel will uh, harden, you know, it, because it dries, which is why it stays so well on the eye. But if you leave it on your brush, it's going to harden, and then the brush is not going to perform for you. So it's a simple little thing of doing alcohol on that and, and cleaning that brush, and it's good to go for the next morning or the morning after whenever you need it, okay? Now, I wanted to, uh, let me see, bring up the next thing. Less is better with makeup. Now, the trick with less is more is that you have to be strategic. You have to use it in the right, your right colors, in the right place, with the right weight. Okay, does that make sense? So your foundation, of course, is essential because it's the canvas with which everything goes on. And done properly, it will wear really well in humid weather. All I'm using today is the print eyeshadow on my brows, and I'm using Brune as my underliner, and the liner I put next to my uh, lash line before I put on my eyelashes, and I've used the Coquette up in here. The rest is foundation. In the eye here, it's the foundation, everything else. A little bit of blush, and my regular number 25 flame 
with 150 over top for a lovely, you know, summer red. For it, and the 150 gives it that warm summer red color, okay? Um, so less is more, but strategically placed with the right color, the right placement, and the right weight. Uh, I just said that, didn't I? <laughs> and I showed you the mini foundation for touch-ups. So that's really, really handy. If you're wearing the long wear Maybelline or the ink, uh, which is a, the more matte finish of the Maybelline, and some people like the color stay uh, lip colors for them, if you're wearing a, a solid long wear uh, lip color, that won't be a problem in the heat and the humidity. If you're covering your eyes and your brows and all that sort of stuff with the dual finish powder, it won't be a problem in the humidity. You will not look like you're melting, okay? So, uh, I think before we move forward to the next little bit, um, let's, let's just see if we have any questions. Hi, Kathy and Wanda. Sharon from Wanda Pease in Portland. Great. Roslyn and... Uh, Narell from Western Australia, good to see you. Mary Ellen, good morning. And Ginger Rose, awesome advice, lovely lady. You smooth talking devil, Ginger. Sydney, hi there. And Catherine King, hi, Kath. And Jade, good morning. Narell, wonder, wonderful tips as always. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And Joan and Wanda, would peroxide, okay, let's bring you up here, uh, Wanda. Would, let me, put you up here then. Would peroxide work for sanitizing brushes? I wouldn't do it, Wanda. Um, I, I think alcohol is better. Al uh, I'm not a chemist by any stretch, so don't hold me to anything, but generally speaking, I've never seen another makeup artist use peroxide to clean their brushes. Alcohol, or you can buy So Clean, which is a good product, but you know, that's your choice. But that, the only other one I would recommend is So Clean. So I hope that helps. Catherine Zazu, uh, let's see, she has a question. Uh, is it okay to use soap and water to clean the waterline brush? Well, um, it would be, except that the gel needs something a little bit more to, to remove it. Okay? Now, if you're using eyeshadow with an eyeliner sealant, which is another way of doing the waterline, then soap and water should work just fine. Because the sealant is a little, is a little uh, liquid that's used for eyebrows, for people who have no hair, who have lost it, or who through chemotherapy or other things have just lost their brows. You can put your brows back on simply with eyeshadow and eyeliner sealant. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. You can dip the brush into a dedicated part of your pan and just a very, 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 very tiny bit of the eyeliner sealant, dip it into the powder and then put it on. Or you can put your stuff on first, your eyeliner or your brows, and then go over it with an eyeliner sealant. And I've got a it will be in, in the description box below a video on how to do that very thing. And that's all we have for questions with respect to that. So let's go to our next uh, long wear tips. Uh, eyeliner sealant is was on the was at the top of the page for this, okay. And um, uh, yes. With eyeliner sealant, those who may be a little bit, um, have a little bit of difficulty with gel liner or the gel pencil that I recommend, with the eyeliner sealant and the brush, brush very similar to this, or a flat edged angled brush, you can, like I said, dip, dip, and then just put it on and push it, like, think about, let me get closer here for you, think about pushing it up into and go around along dotted maybe, pushing it up into your lash line so that it's on the, it's in between the lashes as well as being on the water line, okay? Now, here's another thing. Some people have found, and I have it on good authority that it works very well, instead of using eyeliner sealant, you can use contact lens solution and use that as a sealant instead. Okay, so if you if you wear contact 
uh, um, lenses, you've already got it with you. So, you know, there's there's some choices for you. So we've touched on that. And now the preferred mascara somebody was asking me about. Uh, where did it go? It's right here. I've done a again, I've done I got a video on it, so I'll put it in the description box. But uh, people are really big fans of the double extend, let me get this straight, double extend tube mascara by L'Oreal. I also like now this used to be called Kiss Me but it's now called Blink. It's simply a tube mascara that uh, it doesn't thicken uh, or lengthen necessarily, but it covers your lashes beautifully. But this, the L'Oreal, does lengthen and thicken your lashes. The trouble with this is the delivery system is very poor, but the product is very good. So some people might use, you know, a different kind of a wand. They might dip in instead and then you know, the, there's different ways you can use it. With the Blink, um, I like it because it, 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 if you want a, a um, not too much of a mascara uh, day, if you know what I mean, just put a little bit on. The, the Blink is really good for that. Now, Blink is twice the money of the Double Extend. So you have to figure that out for yourself and see, see what works best for you. But those are the best mascaras, in my opinion. What I like to do also that really gets good performance uh, for your mascara or your lashes is take your lash curler and run it under the hot water tap so that the silicone that's in here will get heated up and curl your lashes with that first. Then apply your mascara. Do your mascara, finish doing the rest of your makeup and then when your mascara is dry, go back in with your, um, your your curler and give it one more because with the tube mascaras they hold extremely well and they act like a waterproof but they are much better on the eyelashes than a waterproof I don't recommend waterproof at all anymore but the thing is once it's dry you curl it again and it will you know it will stay up which is phenomenal that's what I love about them and the gel liner for the waterline, we've already kind of touched on that uh, a, a little bit. So if anybody has any questions with respect to this aspect of makeup, uh, let me know. We're going to have questions again later anyway. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to, uh, to hair. So, keeping your cool hair. Taming frizz seems to be a big thing. Many people have tried and like KY Personal Jelly for that. The trick with taming frizz is if you've got curly hair you want to treat it right in the beginning. I personally like Curl Keeper. Now there's Diva Curl and there's other products but I like the Curl Keeper original only. I don't like their gel. I prefer the Dove gel much better because it's lighter weight. So if you're using the curly, uh, the, the, the curl keeper, when you shampoo your hair and it's, you know, it's wet, you add the original into it and you push it and all that sort of stuff and let it air dry or diffuse dry. Okay. Now, as an example, this is, this is my, my natural state of my hair. And all I have to do, I don't need to curl it or anything, all I have to do is wet it, spritz it with water, or put my hands in the you know hot water tap and just run it through my hair. And it will reactivate the curl. Well, in my case, it's not really curl, it's more of a of a of a wave. But different women have different kinds of curl to their hair. So when you when you reactivate, then you can put up now like this hairdo so simple. All I do is turn my head upside down, grab it like I would a ponytail, put one of those clips in, and again there's videos on this, and voila. Here's the thing as we get older too I wanted to mention. Around the hairline our hair starts to break. It's just a natural part of the hair aging process. And you'll find at the nape of the neck too. Um, you, you know who is, uh, I always found, uh, showed, uh, it, oh, try to get this out, Catherine Hepburn, 
as she aged. She had a lot of breakage around her hair, but she wore her hair up a lot too. But she had a lot of breakage. I think the best thing to do with it is go with it. If you've got curly hair, just give it, put that little bit of stuff in or spritz it with water and let it do its thing and style accordingly. This takes, honest to God, with wetting it and putting it up, took maybe a minute and a half, truthfully. So it's cool, it's not, and then I just eat, and I can either keep these like I've done, or I can spray them and push them back, Wh whatever is my choice. And of course, the John Frieda Frizz Ease is what I like. I find that it's really good. The, the, the firm hold is really quite good. So, you know, taming frizz. And here's the thing with frizz too late is it's usually the outside layer of your hair. Okay. It's not underneath. And why is that? Because the elements, our hair, the, our, the outer layer of our hair is in the elements all the time. The sun, the wind, the rain, it gets the exposure. So it, it, it gets broken easier it, it takes the beating. Have you ever noticed when you, when you put your hair up, how the back of your hair seems really in good shape? It's because it hasn't been exposed to the elements. So, to, you know, taking good care of it and wearing it up and, letting the, and turning the ends in and letting the back be exposed a little bit more maybe sometimes is helpful. And um, when, you're, when you're putting your... Your, either your hairspray or your KY jelly or whatever it is that you that you may already have that you like, put that put that between your hands and only do the outside layer. You don't have to go all the way through your hair and muck up your hair underneath. There's no need to do that. Take care of the frizz underneath if you don't have any. It's the outer layer. So if you do it softly, you can control it without making uh, it weighed down from product. So I hope. I hope that that makes sense to you. Um, so uh, the other thing I had for you was how to avoid hat heads, somebody asked me. Because hats are really a smart thing to wear for the summer. For, there's no two ways about it. If you've got bangs, see these rollers? This is a larger sponge roller. See how that's nice and soft? And here is a smaller one. Whoop, let me get in front of the camera. One of, the, one of the things you can do is put your hair up into a ponytail, wrap a roller in it, depending on the crown of your hat, you can wrap your hair in a roller, even in this one, you can, because you can roll it and tighten it. Let me get this right. You can roll it and tighten it right down. You know what I mean? So it's, it can either be big like this or, or down. If you're putting a hat on, it can crush it down and be fine. Put your hat on wear it for the day or whatever. When you take your hat off, you take out the roller and, and the, um, the elastic, the covered elastic that we're holding it, you know, take it out, head upside down, come back a la Rita Hayworth, and you've got all kinds of curls. Your hair looks great. It, it you know, it, 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 there's, so you've got a hairstyle going on, you're setting your hair underneath your hat, so to speak. So that will help to avoid hat head. Um, and if you've got bangs, you can either take the sec bangs and roll them back or roll them forward. Put it on and then put your hat on, okay? Um, now, if you've got short hair then and wearing a hat, it's really easy to use product or water to... Um, you know, to get in there with your fingers and, and smush it up. Okay, give it some texture. Texture does so much to soften the face too. So I hope I hope those are helpful with respects with respect to um, you know some ideas on how to wear a hat and still have your hair looking great when you take it out. All right, so now I'm going to I'm going to move on to some updos. Now these are these are some updos of videos that I would recommend you go to the hairstyling playlist where all of these all of these are listed. Now on the bottom three, those are those are like chignons, okay? Um, that bottom one with the twist, the twisted one, that is a hair scrunchie with that. So I've just twisted the hair back and that's great if you have bangs and it's really hot. So you can twist the hair back, put in a chignon or a scrunchie, 
either mixed in with your hair, covering your hair, whatever you want, and you are good to go. The second one with the braid over top, what's in the bottom of that to roll the hair over it is a hair piece of hair padding. That goes at the nape of the neck, wrap the hair up and around it. It's easy to, to pin in place and it holds it beautifully. The third one there is the Edwardian flip. And that's where you put your hair in a ponytail, and drag the ponytail down, and then flip it over like a topsy-turvy, only don't bring the hair through. Now, if you've got thin, fine hair, add one of these to it, okay? Or, or, or add, it, add, add a worn-out scrunchie to it so it gives it some volume. Okay, now the next row up, the first one with the braid wrapped around the bun, that is simply a ponytail with a... Um, either an old scrunchie or you know those donuts that you can buy they're um they're sort of a um they're made out of a mesh and you can get them in different colors whatever you want but i just i just use my old scrunchie and in that one i put the scrunchie i put the scrunchie over top of my ponytail and then put the ponytail wrap the ponytail over top of the scrunchie and brought it in and then i just put that simple little um canacle on hair twist that I made around it for a unique look. Cool, easy, and easy to do. The next one over is kind of sort of similar to what I've got. That is where you don't brush your hair up. You only use your fingers like I've done today. Just use your fingers to pull your hair up and and use your, um, you know, your comb like this to bring it out so that it's sitting out a bit more, it's not flat to the head, that sort of thing. So that's what that that's so that's been brought up into a ponytail. And again, um, I've either I can't remember with this one, I've either back combed that hair and kind of twisted it around, or I put a scrunchie over top on top of it and put my own hair over it and then put an elastic around it to pull it all in. And the third one there, the updo, I put that into one of these. But then I've put a, 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 what I would, yeah, another hair padding bigger than this underneath that. And that's when my hair was straight. And then I just combed my own hair over top of it because my hair is not that thick. So it makes the hair look like it's got a nice full bun to it. Okay. And the top picture, uh, in the far, in the far side. Now, if you're looking at it, it's probably on your right where it's the hair is uh, textured and stuff. Again, same hair as I have today, only instead of wearing it on top, you could you do the same clip method and wear it at the nape of the neck. Use just some hair pins just to stick it in a little bit, the ends so that you've got that very relaxed, you know, bordering kind of on a vintage look. Now, in the center, for those who are going gray and are in that transition period, this is where I took some canaclon hair and made some tiny little hair pieces that I put on, hair, on, on, on a hairpin. And I would just stick them in so that at, in, in that picture, my hair wasn't transitioned. I guess it was about six or seven months, something like that. So when I put it up, my hair would be gray here, but then it would be this auburn up here. So when I put the the gray pieces in, mixed in with the auburn, it, it, you know, it kind of changed the look and it was quite unique. And you can see the same in the other one. Now that's where a bun on the crown where the hair has been pulled all back straight, uh, you know, no, no curl or anything, just straight. And again, that was when I was in transition and I just used those same hair pieces and made a smooth bun rather than having the hair fall down. Okay, so I think, uh, I think now it's time for questions. And again, I've got a link uh, to the, um, what do you call it? The hairstyling playlist. Uh, below so that you can just kind of go through and see which hairstyles you, you want to know how to do just by the picture and and then you can log into what you want. Okay, so we have questions now. So let's see where we are. Um, Wanda has a question. Clips, uh, can you show one new subscriber? Oh, yeah, they. You know, that's the one thing I forgot to bring out. And if I leave, I leave. You know, there was, um, oh, I can't, I'm sorry. They're just the little mini clips. You can, you can get them in the drugstores and Target and places like that. They're just mini clips. 
I don't, I don't like the really big ones, especially when you've got thin hair, you don't need them. I've got just, just, they're just about this wide. I guess they would be considered medium because the mini ones are tiny. That's all, that's all you need. Or what you can do too is use a barrette. Use a barrette that clips down and pulls the hair over. But I like this because it brings all the hair to the center and it, and it, um, you know, it just, it just, it, it, so the hair kind of comes out like a fountain from the center. So I'm sorry I don't have one with me, but um, I, I, they're everywhere. They're everywhere, believe me. And Sylvia Hardy. Now I've got to try to figure out these things. Ah, okay. Uh, how can I prevent yellowing on hair? Uh, color very light silver white. Um, cover your hair in the sun, wear a chapeau hat, wear, um, you know, um, try, walk on the shady side of the street, um, all those things, try to avoid it, or use a parasol, an umbrella, anything. Now, if you do get yellowing, then shampoo your hair with baking soda and shampoo and water mixed together. Okay, a couple of, couple of dollars of shampoo, uh, uh, you know, a couple of teaspoons of uh, baking soda with some water in, you know, about a cup's worth of water. Mix it all together and use that, okay? That will get rid of yellowing. But try to, and the other thing that causes yellowing too, uh, besides the sun, excuse me, can be um, medication, uh, can be extra minerals in your water supply, uh, you know, different, different, different things. Oh, oh, and using hot tools on hair that it's that's had hairspray on it once you put hairspray on your hair do not use a hot tool over top of it okay so 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 that would be a problem and when you're if you're blow drying your hair or you are using straighteners or whatever make sure that you use a heat protectant uh, on the hair too i like tresemme works for me uh but there's others and and that should help with uh with your uh yellowing okay i hope that answers your question and joy has a question here uh when i style my hair i find that when i use hairspray to hold up the broken bits when i brush it out it breaks my hair off what would you suggest well I don't know how that, I'm not sure how that would happen. If you use like a flexible hold hairspray and just a, you know, not, mm, but just a should do it. And here's the other thing. Hairspray can be reactivated with water. So if you sprayed your bits and you're fine, maybe they're coming down, run your comb under the water and get rid of the excess and comb it back in place again. Water reactivates hairspray. So, um, if they're if it's breaking off, I I um I, I I'm sorry, I I don't quite understand how that's possible. Maybe it's too much hairspray, and maybe you're brushing it out too hard to begin with. Uh, brush out you always when you're brushing out hair from product or back combing or anything you always start at the bottom of the shaft of the hair and then work your way up okay you don't start at the at the root and try to comb it out hope i hope that helps i hope that helps And hard S Hardy Sharon, uh, all you say, love all, all you say. How can I prevent yellowing of my hair, silver white? Oh, I think we already answered that. With uh, yeah, yeah, okay, that was the second one. Um, please show us how to make the hair matting in various sizes. I have a video on that very thing, and uh, I want to see if I can do something here while I'm speaking to you. Um, hair padding is the name of it, and I will endeavor to put that up in the, um, in the description box. I have a video on that very thing, hair padding, and it's either found in the hairstyling playlist or the hair extensions. I think the hair extensions playlist. I did a whole video on that with different sizes and all that sort of stuff, the kind of hair I used, all that sort of thing. So easy. So And canackle on hair is like you can get a meter of it that's about this thick for like 
four bucks or something like that, depending on where you live. It's the best. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, what size pins are better for updos? Mine show. Ah, okay. There's hair pins, which are shaped like this. There's your regular bobby pin, and then you've got a longer bobby pin and a longer one that's called a roller pin. Now for security, I love roller pins and you can buy them at Sally's. They're the best. They hold the hair so easily and one roller pin, in my opinion, is like it, it takes the place of six bobby pins, okay? Now, I would use the roller pins to secure, if you don't want to use a clip, you can certainly like take the hair up, twist it, put a roller pin across it, let the hair fall down and then do whatever you want with it. Roller pin will secure extremely well. Um, and bobby pins are good for, for the, the finer pieces and hair pins, you know, the ones that are shaped like a, you know, they're separated at the bottom. They're good for finishing and you can get long and short versions of those. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're good for finishing, but you have, you want to make sure you, there's this particular way to use them. You go in, you grab the hair underneath and you twist a little, and then you, then you go in this way and back down that way. Okay. And I think I've got a video on that. Um, at least I've got a picture of it anyway. I'm pretty sure I do. Hope that helps. Thank you. Uh, you're great. Don't, I don't miss any of your videos. Well, excellent. I'm glad you don't. Spread the word. <laughs> and Joy Anderson, thank you. You're welcome, Joy. Now, do we have any other uh, questions? From anybody about any on uh, any of these topics with respect to you know summer hair summer makeup how to how to, how to keep cool the best way that you can and and have your makeup wear really well um, and and I'm going to get back to I'll, I'll show you this about blotting your makeup um, you know the I've shown this before you know the paper towels like the bounty paper towels and you can take them in sections like this I I separate them I, you know, because they can be separate, they come in two layers. And then I use, I use that as my Kleenex. Why? Because the, the paper towels don't have any fibers in them like Kleenex tissues do, or, you know, standard tissues. They have fibers in them. And, and if you, and if you're, you know, wiping your eyes or doing whatever it, um, you know, it can leave the fibers behind. With these, they're real heavy duty too. So when you when let's suppose you're glistening, all you have to do is press, 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 press. That's all you have to do. And it's um and it will take away anything. But do not rub, only press. Okay, and if you need to touch up again, you know, just with that little mini uh, foundation carried around with you, clean finger or a corner of the towel, you can go in like this and apply it with the, with a paper towel. Um, so uh, um, I just wanted to mention that in case. And we have a question from Pat. Thanks. I was using bobby pins only. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's it's interesting that pe more people or hairdressers don't talk about this. Bobby pins are, are great. And here's the other thing, too. Some people might not be aware. Bobby pins come in your standard kind of shiny. You know what I mean? Think about this. Shiny's going to slip out of the hair. Wig bobby pins are a matte finish and they're used specifically for wigs and theater and that sort of thing but they really hold the hair too because they're a matte finish and they don't slip so when you buy bobby pins look for the ones that aren't too shiny okay the other thing is when you put a bobby pin in let me see if i have one i do happen to have one right here i have a white one you see how this isn't too shiny? Well, maybe it does look like it, but it's not, believe me. When you put your bobby pin in, do you see the teeth? That's how you put it in, not this way. 
okay? Because what happens is when this is opened up, the teeth grab hold of the hair and it secures it better rather than the other way around. And um, you can get silver bobby pins. You have to look for them, but they are online. Um, but the matte ones will really, really hold your hair much, much better than your standard, you know, slick uh, bobby pins that tend to slip out. I hope that helps. Um, and uh, Maria, Neil, hello from Northumberland in the UK and, and enjoying the video as all of yours. Very useful and interesting. Oh, thank you very much, Maria. I'm so glad that you are enjoying and that, uh, that, that it's helping. Um, that's, that's really good to hear. So Pat, I hope that that helped with respect to the bobby pin thing. And uh, let's see, we have another one. Uh, Mary Moore, love this topic. Okay, great, Mary. Um, if you have any questions, please post them, okay? Because now's the time to do it. Um, and let's see. Oh, let me fix this a little bit. Yvonne, uh, I too quickly run out of the lip balm and comes with my 24-hour Maybelline uh, lip color. Would you re recommend anything else to use in the remaining lipstick if there's no lip balm left? Ah, no, I would only wear that lip balm. Now, my question to you is, why are you running out of it? Because I always have lip balm left over when my tube is finished. I only apply it once, and that's that's good for me. I mean, but that's my lifestyle, um, and and it and it works just fine. But the trick is to make sure your lips are dry before you add the balm. If they're not, it won't work quite as well. So thin layers of the lip color, when it's good and dry, then put the lip balm on. Let me know, let me know if, if, if that helps, Yvonne, okay? Uh, Jay Brown, good morning. You are looking lovely as usual. Why, thank you. Uh, so fresh. I really noticed how nice your teeth look wearing your red lipstick. Thank you. Um, and I've, I've, I've said this before. The old myth that warm lipstick makes your teeth look yellow and cool lipstick makes your teeth look bright. This would be considered a warm red. My teeth don't look any more yellow than they are for my age, okay? That is a myth, but you know what does make a difference? Uh, a bright, what well, not brighter, a more vibrant lip color makes your teeth look brighter. It's not a question of warm or cool. Believe me, I've tested this out plenty. It's a more vibrant lip color that will make your teeth look brighter. And here's the thing for those who may be interested, I've mentioned it before. When brushing your teeth um, to brighten them up, Crest has a two-step process. In Canada, I think it's about $16. You have a purple tube and a white tube. The purple tube is to clean and the white tube is to polish. And you, you cl cleanse your teeth with the purple color. Uh, uh, lip, uh, not lip color, toothpaste for a minute, minute and a half, and then the same with the other. And it keeps your teeth bright. It really does. I mean, I'll be 73 in a week, and for my age, my teeth look pretty good. And but I I take good care of them, and I you know I have I proper I have proper you know dental hygiene etc. But but using that product and wearing a more vibrant lip is what makes the lips or makes the teeth look brighter. So I hope that I hope that answers your question. Um, and Linda Gaber, I haven't been able to find silver bobby pins. You may have to go online, depending on where you live. If you're in a city where you know there's there's um, theatrical makeup and hair supplies and that sort of thing, you won't have trouble. But if you're living in a smaller era or area, then you may have a little bit of trouble. So check online, okay? Um, Kathleen. 
Uh, thank you for all these wonderful tips. Do you think the hair texturizing with baking soda would be okay for the heat humidity of summer? Oh, you mean put like the one I put up a little while ago? Well, I think it would be. Um, I, I, I don't see why not, but don't hold me to anything because I haven't tried it in the heat. But the thing is, when I go outside, I don't sit in the sun. I wear a hat if I know I'm going to be in the sun, or I carry a parasol. Yeah, that's right, a parasol. I really do. And it, it's, it saves my hair. Like, I, I can't remember the last time I had yellow in my hair. So um, something you may want to experiment with, and because I will be experimenting with it too, okay? Hope that that answers your question as best as I can. Thank you. Uh, and brown. I have a, lots of the lip balm left over. I thought it was strange. I was strange. <laughs> well, if you're strange, so am I. No, you're not strange. <laughs> um, Pat, um, almost 69 years young, and I never knew to turn bobby pins. What would we do without you? Well, you'd probably get along just fine. Um, but you know what? To be very honest with you, I didn't really realize that either. And I was a licensed hairstylist, and I didn't really realize that because I had, you know, my own way of, 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 of doing things. And believe me, I oh, if I had a toonie for every up bridal updo I did, I would be rich. But, um, you know, I, and I used, I used bobby pins the old way. But... You know, it just goes to show you we can continue to learn. <laughs> That's funny, Pat. Um, uh, Jay Brown, I've been using the two-step crest for a while now. It does work well. Thank you for the confirmation. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I, I, I quite like it. And Marcy, when I wore the Maybelline 24 lipsticks, my lips always felt dry. That's why I always ran out of the top coat. Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. Thanks for that. What I would suggest is, for, it's not about the lip color. It's about your lips themselves. Try this. Make sure your face is good and clean and put Vaseline on your lips every night. Doesn't, you know, don't have to put it on with a trowel, but just, you know, cover your lips with it every night and do your cuticles too, okay? So that they're always nice and and uh, you don't have any hangnails or anything like that. Do that, and I guarantee you within a week you're going to find a difference. Believe me, believe me, believe me. And your and your and your lips are not going to be dry. They're going to feel really, really good. Give that a try. And on our next live stream, let me know how it worked. Okay. And uh, Mary Angela. Uh, the Maybelline Color Stay and all Color Stay lipsticks dried up my lips terribly. I was It has taken me six months to restore moisture to my lips. What I just said about the Vaseline, try that. I'm serious. And here's the other reason why we have dry lips. Actually, a few. One, we don't cleanse our face deeply enough. We don't exfoliate our skin. We don't drink enough water. You should drink at least, at least a liter of water a day. And that's not scotch and water. That's just water. And it's not soda. It's just water. Okay? Eat high water content foods. When you're looking at your, at your evening meal or your lunch meal, all, your, your plate should be, uh, you know, one quarter pro, healthy protein, one quarter, uh, you know, uh, complex carbohydrates and half vegetables that way you are eating high water content foods and it's hydrating your entire system the other thing is not protecting your skin when you go out vaseline will do it for you okay and um, if, if your lips are really dry and they're peeling, use, a, use like sugar or, or there's lots of, lots of things you can use with a toothbrush. When you're brushing your teeth, brush your lips too and, and, and scale it back, put some fast. I guarantee you're going, you're going to find that it's going to make a big difference for you, okay? Um, and let's see. Uh, Pat Thompson, baking soda works good for whitening, not every day up. Ah, Thank you for that, Pat. I talked to my dentist about it, and she uh, she said she wasn't a big fan of using baking soda on the teeth. So 
she's been pretty good, so I followed her advice, and that's why I use the Crest two-step. Baking soda is good for so many things. And yes, you certainly can. But like you say, not making a habit of it would, would, would be good. And Gail, how can I get the liner on the waterline to stay in place all day? I'm using the All Made product. Thanks for all you do. You're welcome. Gail, um, the gel pencils, while good, they won't last as long as the Fluid line by MAC or the Bobbi Brown. Um... When I'm using, now mind you, well, my eye is watering again, that's, that's part of aging. I've had this watery eye for, oh, probably the past decade, but that's, that's just the way it is. Um, when, I, when I use the, the gel liner instead of the, not, not, let, me, let me put, when I use the gel pencil instead of the gel, you know what works is to sometimes take when you've uh, uh, takes you know when you put your liner on your lower lash line take that same brush with a little bit of uh, um, you know has a little bit of eyeshadow on it or dip into the eyeshadow more and just go over top of the gel pencil with the eyeshadow remember wax base or gel mixed with powder gives longevity okay so when you do that for your eyebrows why wouldn't it work for here so so give that a try um, what I do is, if if I need to, I always carry a little, a, a tiny little uh, end of a pencil in my in my travel makeup uh, uh, bag, which is like you've seen. I've got a video on it. It's like this big, and it's got everything in it I could need. I just whip that out with my my tiny little compact magnifying mirror and just go over what I need to. But I find if I add some eyeshadow to that or over top of it, it, it seems to seal it. Give that a try and let me know how it works for you. And Yvonne, uh, in summer, do you still apply a darker foundation as a contour and blush? Um, oh, I still wear blush, but I don't use it as a blush. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe that's not what you meant. I'm not really sure. But yeah, I I do because I I don't I don't wear found I don't wear contour here. I only wear it here to cover my ever growing chinny chin chins and the sides of my nose. That's the only place I wear it. We should not 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 as uh, mature femme fatales be wearing contour. Not in my opinion, because it's, 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 no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But for this area, this area, or if you're, if you're covering jowls, you know, you're going over here, that's fine. But blush, absolutely wear your blush. But, but remember, you know, it should be, let me get this care. It should be done in the C shape like this and don't go past your pupil. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Yvonne. Thank you. I will check online for the silvery bobby pins. Okay, excellent. And Denise. Whoa. Hi, Denise. Let me just bring you in here a little bit. And let's see. I have a pale pink dress for my daughter's wedding. Uh, and unfortunately, pink lipsticks don't do it for me. Can I still wear red? White hair, blue eyes, warm skin tone. I would. I would wear red. Now, if you're wearing the Maybelline Superstay, I would, I would coach you to try the Perpetual Plum, the number 25 Perpetual Plum, because it is a warm pink. It's a warm pink, and it looks good with all pinks. I, I don't look great in pink either, but I like the, the Perpetual Plum. I, I, because it has the warmth in it. Try that. And what looks really good too is the perpetual plum with, with the, the 25 flame red lipstick. That, that can look really good too, but you know, fine, thin layers. I, I would, I would, I would, um, really like to coach you into trying the perpetual plum because you can always warm that up even more if that's what you want. Okay. All right, hope that helps. 
And Patricia loves the videos. Well, great. And Kathy, um, I'm sorry I've joined your chat so late. That's okay, because I do play back. I love your li lipstick. Can you advise the color and brand? It's amazing. My son's wedding is in a week, and this looks great. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Kathy. Um, as I said at the top of the hour, it's the Maybelline Superstay 24-hour number 25 flame with number 150 over top okay to give it a warm look if I wanted it to be more of a cool red I would add the 110 so it would make it look more cool to go with berries if I wanted it more of a coral look I would add number 20 which will which will give it a you know kind of a corally look I just for me I like the 150 I I just and, and I that's what I wear unless I'm wearing something in the blue or cool tones then I'll switch up the highlight to the 110 so I hope that helps joy I learned so much from your live videos they are great uh, you are so generous in sharing your vast story of beauty knowledge we are very blessed at well thank you very much joy um, and on that note ladies Please, just a reminder to thumbs up this video. I see there's already one down. You know, I've got my growing list of haters too. But um, if you could thumbs up the video, it would be very helpful. And thank you, Joy. I'm glad that 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 it, it the, the lives work for you. And Mary, my lips are dry except when I use Color Stay. Now that's interesting. Then if that works for you and it wears well, then excellent. Continue on. And we have Jan Cook here who says, Vaseline is a miracle worker. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, oh, oh. And the other thing with Vaseline, love it. It removes your eye makeup and your um, super stay when you've cleansed your face. And all I do is put a little bit on a Q-tip and go over and it takes it all off. And if I've had any heavy-duty eye makeup, you know, or like if I use the gel liner on the waterline or whatever, the Vaseline just takes care of everything. Thank you, Jen. Yeah, Vaseline and baking soda are just the best. Every every dame should have some of the, either of those products with her. Okay, and Maria, I use brightening shampoo for my gray hair to cover the yellow. Is there anything that's better? Ah, yes, Maria. Stop in the name of love no stop using purple shampoos in my opinion why because with regular use they cause a metallic look to the hair that means they take it starts to look like a metal and not a not a pretty metal and purple shampoos many of them if your hair is on the porous side, it will tint the hair a lavender or a blue tone, which, you know, it's, it, it's really not. Baking soda will clean the yellow out of your hair. And if your hair isn't yellow, you don't need to use it. But baking soda also works as a hair clarifier. Instead of buying an expensive clarifying shampoo, just Put some baking soda in your shampoo with and and uh, and, and add a little water to it, and uh, you've got a, an instant clarifier as well. Yeah, it, it, save yourself the money and from turning your hair blue or metallic, and just use the baking soda, Maria. Okay, and Patricia, do you apply sunscreen first or moisturizer first? Truthfully, for me, I just put the sunscreen on. I don't bother with the moisturizer. I use the Neutrogena, Neutrogena Sheer Light, I think it's called, whatever it is. I've, I've, it's on, it's on the, 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 you know, the channel in, in one of the videos or two of the videos. For me, that's just what I do. But my skin, I take pretty good care of it, but I don't spend a lot of money doing it. And but the the trick with with skin is to be consistent. You know, um, cleansing it every single night. I'm serious about that. Cleansing it every till all 
all, all, makeup and any of its residue is off. Simply exfoliate your skin twice a week. I, I sometimes use a Clairsonic clone where I, after I've cleansed my face, I do it one more time and, and use the electric, you know, thing. Sometimes I use an almond scrub when I'm in the shower to give it an extra clean. That's essential. And moisturizing it well at night before you go to bed. I use a Q10 for my eyes, and this is just me, and I use an AHA one night and a retinol the other, okay? Paula's, Paula's Choice is a good place to go for, 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 for skin care. That's not my forte, but this is what works for me. And I'll be 73 next week, and I think my skin is pretty good for the age I'm at. So cleansing is, um, is, uh, is really important. Now, when your skin is in good shape, then it's not going to be too dry. And if you're eating right then it's, and drinking enough water, your skin's going to be in pretty good shape. It's not going to be too dry or, or, or whatever, especially at this age. So, But if you feel that you need the moisturizer, then put that on first. Let it do its thing and then put your sunscreen on. Try it out. See how it works. Maybe you can get by without it. You know, you'll, you'll have to experiment. But I hope that that helps you uh, a, a little bit anyway. Um, Mary Angela, I'm doing all those things. Vaseline is by my bed, but water has not been. Ha ha. <laughs> EST friend. <laughs> okay. So step up the water and step up the high water content foods. And I think that you might start to find a difference. Um, as Hardy says, is there a trick to applying lashes? They would be so much better for summertime. Ah. Uh, I have a video on that very thing, um, an updated video that um, if you look in the makeup uh, playlist, it's right there. Or if you go to the search bar and just put in false lashes or faux lashes, you know, in the search bar on the, on the channel, it'll come up. Um, I'm wearing them today. I love false lashes. I, you know, I, I do mascara, but oh, false lashes, if I, if I want to have a look, and especially one for all day long, I find that false lashes are just the way to go. They're just much easier. And I like the Kiss Zero Two or Sultry. I think they're the most natural. And lashes, my lash, this, la this set of lashes, now granted I haven't been wearing them at all. I had, I had these at Christmas time. But when you clean them properly, and I show it all that on the video, pack them away so that they don't get, you know, squished or mushed or anything, they should last you a long time. Yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of false lashes. Um, I thought this was at 11. It, it was at 11 EST, Eastern Standard Time. But anyway, the playback goes up, so you, you know, at, shortly thereafter, so you, you'll be able to see anything that you missed. Catherine, may I suggest a bamboo brush for long hair? My hair was has thinned out and is below my shoulders now. Uh, no more nylon bristles for me. I brush from the ends up. Yes, yeah. Why not? If you like the bamboo brush, yeah, that's that's great. I think my hair is uh, slipping. It feels like it. Maybe it's just me. There. Um, yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's a great idea. Now, he, speaking of brushes and things, these are the only things that I use. I use a, a comb like this, you know, that has the prongs on it, uh, because the, t the teeth are a little bit further apart, and so for certain things, that's great. I also use this barber's comb, which is an essential, and it's got the perfect rat tail for lifting as well. And then for me, I also use this um, small or narrow back brushing brush for back brushing. It's perfect. And for if you're wearing straight hair, it's good for smoothing the top layer of your hair over your back brushing. So, um, yeah, thanks for that, Catherine. And Kathy, thank you. You're the best. Well, thank you. There are those that would disagree with you, but I'll take it. Thanks. Um, and 
Ms. Cocoa Pies. The hair at my crown keeps breaking and the rest of my hair is shoulder length. Any suggestions to prevent breakage? Whoa. Well, the usual diet, um, uh, hydrated body, and protection. Um, if your hair is breaking off at the crown but not any place else, are you back back combing or rolling it in a way that is harsh? Are you pinning it in a way that is harsh on the hair? Uh, check your products that you're using to shampoo your hair, and I would check with your doctor too because if it's just if it's just breaking on the top, um, it could be too um, that you know. Female pattern baldness is a thing, and a lot of women have it. Um, oftentimes, we, when we get thin on top, the hair will break first, and then it becomes thinner and thinner. Um, and that's where toppers come in really handy, depending. Without seeing it, um, I, I, I don't know what I can suggest other than those things. And, and I would check with your doctor because, yeah, I would just check with your doctor because it may be something else again, okay? It could be medications too. I don't know what you're taking. So, uh, you know, all those things need to be looked at, okay? So um, anyway, good luck with it, and, uh, and, I, and I hope you find out what it is. Sorry I couldn't help you any further. Um, the thumbs down types must be ugly inside and out. Well, I like not to call anybody ugly, but... Um, they just they just have a hate on you know people with a hate on there's something more to the to the issue than meets the eye um maria wow you don't look that age beautiful well thank you i i am that age trust me my body tells me so um and uh, sorry we can all hope we look like you at 73 you're beautiful thank you Th thank you ladies but listen i'm telling you it's the makeup it's the makeup and the hair and taking good care of my skin and the other things. Truthfully, 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 that's what it is. When I say smoke and mirrors, I'm not kidding. You know, you've seen me without makeup. I just make sure that I, that I, I turn myself out as well as I can because it, 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 um, it just makes me feel better too. And Mary Angela. Mary Angela. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for, for helping me correct that. And Pat, my daughter says I ruined her. Oh, she cannot go to sleep without cleaning her face. She has beautiful skin and is 49. Excellent. Yes, thank you, Pat. Bravo for ruining your daughter, too. <laughs> she will thank you forever, I'm sure. Yes, that it's it's a uh, it's a big um, whoa, something flying around in here. It, it it it's it's an essential to good to good looking skin and your makeup wearing well. And Pat, my birthday is tomorrow. Yay, Gemini! Ah, you always get two for one with us. <laughs> yes, well, a very happy birthday, Pat. I hope you celebrate in all the ways that are important to you. And um, you know what I do um, uh, when it comes to my birthday? I I, I reflect on the first six months of the year because I I journal and I have you know, goals that I set for myself. Although when I was working and my children were around, it was, it was very different, but now it's like everything's left the building. So, you know, um, it's just me, myself and I, which is fine. I like it actually. And, uh, but, but there still is goals, uh, you know, if you want them. And, and I don't like to think of goals as something yet. Oh, it's an arduous what is what are what are the goals for fun or things that you love to do or feel that you're passionate about and i and i i take about 3 days for my birthday cuz i believe all birthdays require at least a weekend's worth of celebration whether that's just 
doing exactly what you want, going for a spa, something, having a glass of wine with a friend, you know, whatever it is for you. Um, but for me, um, checking out how, how I've done in the past six months and, and where do I want to head in the next six months is something that I really enjoy. And I do it with a glass of wine or a, or a cup of caffeine. And I really sit and think about it, read over what I've written up to you know, for the first six months. And I got to tell you, it's one of the one of the things I really look forward to doing as a birthday celebration. Oh, I'll bet you if any 20 year old heard that they'd roll their eyes big time. Anyway, happy birthday to you, Pat. Okay. So we don't seem to have any more questions. So I, I, uh, I just want to uh, mention, you know, the usual, whatever it is you're aiming for, whatever your goals are, you've got to practice, have patience with yourself, and keep doing it. The persistence is number one. Um, and, 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 um, and think clean, protect, minimal, uh, correct placement and weight, uh, and, and uh, you know, your, your mini foundation and absorbent papers and get three hairstyles that you can hone for yourself that will, um, that, that will serve you well, okay? Now, it seems like we have a couple more. Uh, Catherine King, happy birthday, Sharon. By the way, diet does play a big part in everything about our bodies. Thanks for mentioning that. Oh, you're so welcome, and I, I so mean that, too. And Maria, I've started to use face creams that I discard to massage my neck, especially where the thyroid glands is. Well, why not? If it's working for you, that's great. Now, I just want to check in here with you ladies on um, and to remind you to please, um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do and tell a friend to subscribe to. I am not monetized. I receive no benefit. I get no payment. I do this to share and in my daughter's name to, to share and help. Now, for those of you who who either know or would white, like to know about my advocacy, I'm a pretty strong, um, you know, advocate, and um, uh, I was a politician uh, uh, as well as one of my incarnations, and I have strong views about a better world. So if you're interested in that stuff, follow me on my advocacy channel, and if you like it, spread the word. Remember to please like the video, thumbs up, Share it with somebody or one other person and subscribe if you haven't by clicking that bell so that you get notified. You can follow me on my public beauty page on Facebook at Sharon Danley Beauty or on the Going Gray and Loving It, which is a group page that is uh, closed. So it's just us gals just talking all stuff that comes with aging, inner and outer beauty and so forth. And for Make Better's Post to pick either on either of those Facebook pages, and I can take it from there for you. Now, like I said earlier, um, the uh, what do you call it? What am I trying to say here? Um, the um, oh yeah, on the search on the on the on the page on the two minute tips beauty page. Do you see where that little eyeglass is? Search for any questions that you have about anything, okay? And uh, and and it will the playlist will come up. And here's the playlists on the other side. It's really easy. If you go, just click on that, and it will take you to all the playlists that uh, that are available on here and where everything is hidden. So like the the hairstyling uh, and the hairstyling uh, hair extensions. There's the best beauty tips and there's uh, a, a streamlined makeup uh, all there for you. Okay, so this week's quote, an authentic smile, active listening, attentive body language with a well-groomed presentation is beauty at its best, in my not-so-humble opinion, it would seem. Okay, well, um, we've come to the end of our journey here, and I want to thank you for joining me today. As always, it's a pleasure to spend some time with you. Just remember to please take good care of yourself. 
take good care of the, the your loved ones and the world around you. And um, and if you've benefited from what you've learned on here, please consider paying forward your own time, talent, or treasure to someone in your postage stamp of the world uh, that's in need. Okay? So, I believe that's the end of the trail for today. Have a wonderful balance of the day. And next week, I've got um, a video coming up to show you how to stretch your foundation with a little alcohol. And I don't mean this kind, okay? Anyway, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon. Mwah!